Ellerslie, Georgia, January 25th, 2002. I've read and watched everything I could on this missing persons case. So I had to basically try to differentiate and stick to all the known facts reported from the local news in Columbus, Georgia. Ellerslie, Georgia is 17.9 miles away from Columbus, Georgia. It's 25 minutes in a car. Christopher Carlton Tompkins, nickname Chris, was 20 years old when he just seemingly vanished into thin air. Or that's what people would like for others to believe. People don't just vanish into thin air, do they? This case involving Chris has left far more questions than answers. 20 years later, there have been no arrest and not much talk even about this case unless you are searching for his name. Whatever happened to Chris, will it ever be revealed? Because he is still missing. So please help me try to figure out what could have possibly happened to this young man. Anne McKenzie worked as a babysitter. This is Chris's mother. She worked for the family that owned this surveying company, which is an unnamed company through any articles that I have read. The name of the company's owner hasn't been mentioned in any of the research I looked at. A little bit about surveying. It's a good job, it pays well, and I'm sure that Chris was glad at 20 years old to have this opportunity to work for this company. Surveyors are people who measure land for various reasons, upcoming construction projects. I believe the GPS maps are used off of some form of surveying and even residential homes will have surveyors come out and determine the property's dimensions. Again, Chris really liked this job and several of his co-workers said that he worked really hard. He was a hard worker. Again, it was only four people, including himself and the boss. No articles I ever read mention how long that Chris had worked for the company, but on January 25th, Around 8, 10 a.m., Chris would say goodbye to his mother and he would head off for work. Chris had absolutely no problems with his mother. They had no issues in their relationship around this time, if ever. And Chris was still living at home. He was 20 years old and that's still pretty young. He doesn't have any mental health issues and believe me you, if he had any kind of criminal background, that would have been the top story before him being missing. It is what it is. He was well-liked, well-rounded. His family and friends would tell you that. He was also reborn in his faith. So things were good for Chris around this time. Chris would park his car at the office and he drove with his co-worker to the job site. A few articles suggested that this co-worker was his boss. That's very typical. So his boss took him to the job site. Chris and his boss would join the other two men that were already at the job site. So now it's a total of four men that are surveying this area. Keep in mind, it's a lightly wooded area. It's on Highway 85 and Warm Springs Road. I drive through that area quite often. It's not like the surveying crew was deep inside the woods that you couldn't see them. They're somewhat white by the highway. So cars are driving by freely. Now all four of these men are in line, 50 feet from one another. Christopher was in the rear of the line. A coworker was having a conversation with Chris while they were working. I don't know what the conversation was about. Obviously, 
it was never mentioned. If it was something that either men were arguing about, it was just a typical conversation, I'm going to say, making the day go by. The co-worker said he glanced at Chris. He was there. Now, in my mind, I'm thinking they're looking at each other, looking down to see what they're doing, looking at each other, looking down. So the co-worker would glance up at Chris again, and Chris is gone. He just vanished. In just seconds, Chris would just vanish. The co-worker thought, that maybe Chris went to use the bathroom. Now, I'm not sure if it's one of those porter potties that they had, or I'm not sure if maybe he just went behind a tree. But the co-worker said he thought that Chris went to use the bathroom. I also must add in several articles, it stated that Chris would actually disappear after lunch. However, around 1.30 p.m. after lunch, the boss would inform his wife that Chris was missing. Now, I am just assuming that his wife is the mother of the children that Miss McKenzie sat for. Now, in some articles, I read that the owner had actually called the police or went down to the police station. And basically he said that Chris had walked away from the job to start a new life. On local news TV down here, WTVM, it states that Christopher Tompkin was last seen walking away from the job site. So his coworkers actually seen him walking away from the job site. No. I thought the co-worker looked up in medieval of the conversation and he was gone. Miss McKenzie wouldn't be informed until around 4.10 p.m., maybe four or more hours later, that her son was missing. Now, she would try to get help from the police, but they told her that she could not file a missing persons report until 24 hours later. Naturally, she was not going to wait. Chris's family would gather along with volunteers and I heard the co-workers and search for him themselves. Now, in another article, I read that the police came out and actually searched and would find this evidence. I'm not sure if it was Chris's family and the volunteers that found this evidence or the police that found this evidence, but you gotta understand the police did not come out until the following day. Now they would find blue pieces of fabric that was consistent with what Christopher was wearing. And it was stuck in the barbed wire fence. There was one boot dangling off that barbed wire fence and that boot belonged to Chris. His work tools was left and 12 cents of Chris's money was on the ground. In the article that was stated by the police, the evidence was found the following day. I have to repeat that because I read and watched different things that said similar but different circumstance. It doesn't matter if the evidence was found the next day, it doesn't matter if the police had came to the, to the site, or it doesn't matter if Chris's family had went down to the police station. What mattered is the evidence is left there and Chris is gone. Chris is gone. Mrs. McKenzie said the evidence that was found, the blue fabric stuck in the barbed wire fence and one of his boots left, it was inconsistent with what the boss and the co-workers had told them about Chris disappearing. Remember, they said he basically just left. So if you just walked away from your job because you were fed up with whatever was going on there, why would your boot be left behind? Why would you have a piece 
of your clothing. That why would you leave your tools? Tools are extremely expensive. Why would you leave your tools behind? Miss Mackenzie also said, "It was not true with what the boss had been saying. The boss had been saying that Chris was acting." Quite odd. He was acting strangely before he disappeared. Miss McKinsey would know if her son. She lived with her son. She would know if her son was acting strange in any kind of way. He wasn't, and she knew if her son did want to leave that job site, he would have left with not one of his boots. He would have kept both of his boots on his feet, and he would have left. And why, why would they wait four or more hours to contact them if Chris had left the site? Now, mind you, I know Chris is not a child; he's a twenty-year-old young man. But, however, you would think that Miss McKenzie had a little bit more—I'm going to say—of a a friendship relationship with these people. Remember, she is watching. Their children or a child—I'm not sure how many kids—but she's watching family. So I would think they would call her and say, "You know, your son left, like immediately. Your son left." But they call four hours or more later to tell her her son left. I did read in one of the articles that one of the co-workers shortly after. The disappearance of Chris had obtained a lawyer. I'm not sure if this coworker was the one that was speaking with Chris during his vanishing. Another or the same coworker, years later, had done some prison time for a crime not involving anything that had to do with Chris' disappearance. I don't know who the coworker was. Matter of fact. No names of any of these coworkers or the owner of this company was even mentioned. Now I will say that I couldn't even, of course, find what this coworker did. If I can't even find a name of who this coworker is, but I wanted to know: was whatever he did, could it have been something? That was a violent crime. I'm trying to piece anything together, but that coworker did do time, and they also stated. I don't know if that coworker, along with the other three, took lie detector tests, but it did say at least one had taken a lie detector test, and I guess it came back okay. I guess it was no deception. Now they're saying that there was no motive in Chris's disappearance. It had anything to do with the coworkers, with the three remaining coworkers. I don't know if they were all investigated or if they were even investigated properly. I doubt very seriously if they had been investigated properly. Now a lot of the comments, and I love to look in the comments, they suggest that you know Chris hadn't been working there long enough to form a bad opinion of them. So these two or three other coworkers couldn't form a bad opinion about Chris because he hadn't been there long enough. That there were no kind of issues that came up. They said that he was a good worker. Now, before I even get into that, I would just like to state: I don't know the names of these coworkers. I don't know the races of these coworkers. Was this perhaps a racial bias crime? I did a video the other day on James Bird. For those of you that don't know, he was a 49-year-old man out of Jasper, Texas. He left his parents' home around 2:30 in the morning because they had a family function. He lived three miles away from his parents' home, so he was walking on a dirt road heading home, where three younger white men offered him a ride, ultimately only to take his life. They would viciously 
beat and assault this man in the most cruelest, disgusting ways only because he was black. They did not know this man. One of the men that assaulted him said he would see James Bird around town sometimes because James did not own a car. He walked everywhere he went. So he would see him around town. They did not know this man. They never said two words to this man, but on that night, they offered him a ride with intent, intent to do what they did. So was this a racial bias crime with Chris? Chris was black. Was his co-workers all white? A lot of people are just assuming that they were all white. Could it have been a racial crime. Several months later, another boot was found and it did belong to Chris. It was several miles away, I read in some articles. In another article, it was just a few feet away in a residential area on a, on a man's property. He had found the boot and it belonged to Chris. Now, keyboard detectives try to figure out what happened to Chris as well as myself. Maybe a wild animal attacked him. However, there was no blood. And again, the men were 50 feet away. 50 feet away. The co-workers didn't hear any screaming, any kind of animal sounds, nothing. A vortex opened and swallowed him up in the earth. Now, I wouldn't say I don't believe in that kind of stuff because I do. However, I don't believe in this situation. I don't believe it happened in this situation. The highway is nearby. Chris owed money. Or maybe it was over a girl. Maybe someone had driven up, grabbed him away from the scene and took him away. Because he owed money or over some girl. Again, the co-workers don't hear anything. They don't see two or more men scruffling anywhere. They don't see this. It's flat land. They're very close together. They don't see anything. I must say, if people that knew Chris personally actually had driven up and did something like this, this would have actually been solved 19 and a half years ago. It would have. It really would have. I've never seen any pictures of the co-workers, so I don't know, again, if they were all Caucasian. I have, I have no idea. But it just, it rings out. It really does. And the reason why the co-workers are getting targeted, not just by me, but anybody that looks at this case, because they know something more than what they're telling. 20 years later, this has been quiet. This has been under wraps. You haven't heard anything. At least you're not in the right places to hear anything. In 2009, skeletal remains were found. They were not Chris's. It was of someone else that vanished in that same area as well, where the bones had turned up. Miss McKenzie says she is not a citizen with great influence, just a grieving mother who wants to keep her son's case in the public eye, hoping that someone will come forward one day so that she knows what has happened to her son and she's able to lay him to rest because she believes that he's dead and she just wants closure. I hopefully will be able to make a part two. I have reached out to Mrs. McKenzie and I'm hoping that she could clear up a few of the missing pieces because when you look for information about this story, it's repetitive. Everyone is pretty much saying the same things because there is no information. There's absolutely no information. And she could be that one person who was there, in a sense, who can add 
to the pieces that is somewhat missing. Will it make a difference? I don't know. Hopefully it's a part three where Christopher Carlton Thomas is actually found. Even if it's his remains. But so his family could lay him to rest. And they could start a grieving process. It's hard to grieve for somebody that simply vanished or walked away wearing one boot to start a new life and leaving his car behind. Remember, he got a ride by his boss to the job site. So he just walks off on a highway with one boot, leaving his tools behind to start this new life. Christopher Carlton Thompson, nicknamed Chris. He's five foot seven inches. He was 130 pounds. He has black hair at the time and he had it worn in corn rolls. He was wearing a black shirt, blue and gray plaid jacket, and a gray hood. Navy dicky work pants. He had on tan FUBU work boots and a black skull cap. He has a tattoo on his right arm of an ice cream cone and his nickname, Chris. Chris would have been 40 years old, 2022. But he's forever 20. 